It's the beginning of spring. The smell of garlic is in the air and I'm out foraging for Allium ursinum or more commonly known as wild garlic. Oftentimes you'll smell wild garlic before you see it and in this case I just smelt it, came around the corner and there it was. Quickly set my camera up so it looked like it was the first time I'd been there. Uh, whipped out my bag and proceeded to collect some leaves. Now the best thing you can do is just pick the leaves, give them a whiff. If it smells like garlic you're pretty much in there. So just rip off a few of the leaves and pop them in your bag. Don't uproot them, I mean all the garlic is edible but it is illegal to uproot wildflower if you don't have permission for the landowner. Just take the leaves, you don't need a lot because they are quite pungent. It's a bulbous perennial that produces primarily by seed. The narrow bulbs are formed from a single leaf base and produce a bright green entire elliptical leaf up to 25 centimetres long and 7 centimetres wide. The entire plant is edible. There are a few other plants to look out for when foraging for ramsons, woodland and enemies. The leaves aren't the same as the wild garlic but they do have a white flower so it's just one to avoid. And bluebells come out at the same time. The leaves could be classed as similar. That will give you a bit of a dicky tummy. And lords and ladies has a similar kind of leaf but if you rip it and it doesn't smell like garlic then just avoid it. We've got a few slack handfuls of stinky wild garlic in the bag. Now let's go home and add it to our dinner. Right, let's get into the cooking. We've got a rack of lamb which we will sear off over a high heat and then we'll just put that to one side and we'll let that rest. We'll wash our hands. Take the wild garlic, roll it up into a little ball, makes it easier to cut, and then we'll finally dice that. Then we'll get some rosemary from the garden and do the same. Take a bowl, add some breadcrumbs, some grated parmesan, in with the rosemary and the wild garlic, give it a good stir, and then we're going to cover our lamb in Dijon mustard. Then rub over all the breadcrumb mixture so that it sticks to the meat. And I'm going to take some tin foil, get your butcher to um, French trim the bones of your lamb and then cover the bones in tin foil so that they don't burn in the oven. There we go. Into a baking tray and into the oven at 200 degrees Celsius for around 25 minutes. Then cover the lamb with a tin foil and a tea towel and let it rest for another five or 10 minutes. And then it's done. Look at that. Now the moment of truth. How is it cooked? I like it to be pink in the middle and that looks pretty good to me. Let's see how it looks from this angle. I know exactly how it looks from this angle, mate, because I've I filmed it, so I know it looks good. Look at that. Bosh. Little meat lollies. Wonderful stuff. Look, there you go, mate. You having that? I made a little bit of homemade mint sauce to go over the lamb. Just to give it that sharpness, just to cut through the fat. And there it is, mate. Job done. There we have it, man. 
just showcasing a bit of wild garlic. I was trying to use it all through the meal and it just goes to show, you know, you can, you can jazz it up a little bit. You can jazz it up a little bit with these meat lollies. Look at that. Go, go. I foraged these, this wild garlic not so far from my house. So you've seen me make it. It's pretty much just rack of lamb. You know all ingredients. And then I'm having it with, I made some wild garlic pesto and added some mint. So it's mint and wild garlic pesto peas with the Hasselback potato, which is just slice the potato loads, oil, butter, keep basting it as it's cooking. And whatever herbs, bit of salt you want to do at the end. I've chosen a bit of Tubby Tom's there. Garlic and herb seasoning just over the potato and then a homemade mint sauce to go over it just to keep her moist. <clears throat> oh man, even if I do say so myself, that is la chef's kiss. The trick with the potatoes is to cut them all down, put something next to your potatoes like uh, the edge of a spoon or something next to your potato. So when you're slicing down, you hit that and you don't go all the way through. Um, oil on the outside, then bang it in the oven for however long, 30 minutes or whatever, until it starts opening up. You'll see, oh, oh shit. You see like that, look. It starts to open up and then take it out and baste it and Fill all the gaps with butter or oil or whatever you want, seasoning, really get into the heart of the spud. But yeah, that's just it, man. There's, there's loads of wild garlic about at the moment, so if you smell it, I'll, I'll interject. I'm sure I've chopped this video up with, with hints and tips on how to, how to forage it. I hope I have anyway. I hope I have. I've been very busy. I hope I've done that. Um, so yeah, grab some. You don't have to go as fancy as this. You can just chuck some in your salads or make a little pesto, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, it's abundant at the moment, so it'd be silly not to utilize it. Oh, you can eat it like a lolly. Ridiculous. Mm. Right, I'm gonna go and enjoy my tea. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.